Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Today is the day the Lord has made, and we want you to rejoice and be glad. Now, I realize that many of you are going through difficulties. Situations have uh, come into your life that don't generate a lot of joy and happiness. But always remember this. Happiness is someplace that you visit. It's not promise that you're going to have happiness in every area of your life. In the world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, Jesus says, I have overcome the world. So we're talking to overcomers. If you are a believer, you're an overcomer. You might not feel like it right now, but positionally, you are an overcomer. And no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. Yes. Welcome to the Christian and the Culture, a program designed to take the Word of God help you to evaluate the word of God for your life and in this current world. Is it real? Does it have power? What value do you put on the word of God? Is it a living word or just a set of principles that you feel forced to apply to your life? Today we're gonna to challenge you again from the word of God with an interesting text and these men of God that are here with me we're going to work together to try and bring the reality and the original intent of this passage into <laughs> your daily existence. So let me introduce my outstanding co-host, Pastor Brian Weatherspoon of Tabernacle Harvest Church, all the way in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Pastor, how are you today? I'm well, Bishop. Thank you for asking. And Christian and Culture family, I'm always excited to be with you and you know what I'm going to tell you. You already know how this goes. Move the coffee table, get the people over. Let's get ready to dig into this hot topic. All right now. And always joining us is our resident theologian who is moving through his advanced degree in divinity and Bible theology. And we are blessed to have him with us. And that's Pastor Timothy Baldwin of Bethel Deliverance Church way up in the northeastern section of Philadelphia. Pastor, how are you today? Bishop, I'm doing well, thank you. Christian and the Culture family, thanks for joining us again. Uh, for another exciting episode. And so uh, let's let's see what Bishop Lambert has for us today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm always the bad guy, but that's okay. <laughs> today we want to talk about the correlation between a, uh, a miracle that was wrought by both Jesus and Peter and how that connects to us today. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, we learn about Jesus walking on the water, miracle number one. Jesus is walking on the water. After praying all night, he walks on the water. The disciples see what they call a ghost. The word a phantom mm -hmm. is coming towards them. Peter, my man, stands up and says, since it's you, bid me come on the water. King James says, if it's you, bad syntax. It's since it's you. They knew his voice. They knew it was him. Yes. So he didn't have to say, if it's you. Right. He said, since it's you, bid me come. Second miracle. Peter leaves the boat and walks on the water. Like so many of us, we respond to the call of God. We gave our heart to Jesus. We surrendered to the Lordship of Christ. We became born again Christians and started the, the miraculous walk on water called salvation. Amen. But then the scripture says Peter became aware of his surroundings. Mm -hmm. The wind was boisterous. And that word boisterous really means more authoritative. It doesn't mean just loud, but Peter's mindset was changed. He felt that the winds were more powerful than Jesus's command to come. Mm. And when he does that, the scripture says he began to sink. Gentlemen, in what way have we responded with that same type of fear and we're sinking when God calls us to walk on the adversities of life? How are we looking at the boisterous wind and sinking in these end times? Bishop, you said something key, that he, he saw the wind and that it was greater than the command yes. of the Lord Jesus to come and to, to he was really inviting him into his world. Yes. He's like, I'm, yeah. I'm inviting you into mm. this wow. kingdom mm. context. Wow. Wow. And, mm. and wow. as long as he kept his eyes That's on the good. Lord, he was able to, to, to come into that context, wow. to live in that, in that, mm. in that particular arena. And so today we mm. see it with, with adversity, uh, you know, mm. we say things like, you know, they don't make these like they used to right. anymore, right? It's the same thing now. It's not that God doesn't make believers the same way. It's just something that's happening to believers that yeah. we don't have the same kind of fervency and, mm. and the same kind of 
a, a chutzpah yeah, to, wow. to yeah. go through and to keep our eyes on the command of the Lord. And, yeah, and that's what we're good. seeing today. Now, yeah. I got to I got to say something here, because when you when you made the statement that Peter was invited into Jesus's world in Mark's gospel, there's another invitation. Go into all the world, preach the gospel, mm -hmm. lay hands on the sick, cast out devils. Mm -hmm. We're being invited into that that miraculous yeah. working world Absolutely. of the kingdom. Yes. Are we moving in that or have we begun to pull away from it from earlier applications of the 50s and 60s, early 70s? Yeah, you know, again, Bishop, I, I know I'm always in the middle, but but it, it's like I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Right. Mm -hmm. Because, again, I think in some context we are we are passionate about the Great Commission. And then on some in some cases we aren't. And you why? Know, it, because I think the gospel message has been watered down. Mm -hmm. We have become commercialized yep. in our in our uh, expression mm. of Christianity. When when you look at that text in Matthew uh, uh, Matthew's mm -hmm. Gospel, Matthew twenty eight, and, and over there in the uh, Gospel in Mark, um, he he's inviting us in, and we, and we use this term missio dei, the mission the mission of yeah. God. Like yeah. he's inviting us to get on mission with him. Wow. Yeah, yeah, That's and I think good. I think yeah, sometimes yeah. we we lose sight of sure of that do. mission. Pastor Brian, I'm walking on the water. I responded to the come mm. that Jesus gives out, yeah. and then I see the waves. Mm. What are some waves that hit us mm. as we're walking on the water that, <laughs> that's taking our attention from the Christ? Mm. Uh, wave number one is, is, well, it's not a wave. Now be nice. <laughs> I'll be nice. It's not a wave, but we forget the boat folk were behind them. Okay. They were still in the boat. Right, right. Suggesting in the first place, you shouldn't leave us. <laughs> <laughs> and you shouldn't even do that in the first place. And so. Are you it, suggesting it, that there are people in our lives oh, that don't want us to oh, walk into the Oh, it is not a suggestion. It is a statement. <laughs> there are people who thought you should have never taken that walk down the aisle to get wow. saved in the first place. Wow. And so that's the one hurdle you have to get over just to get out of the boat. Uh, but praise God you did. The, the wave number two becomes self because what he started to do is see that I, I technically cannot do this. Yeah. Right. So there was a, there was a huge evaluation of self and reminder that you're really not that good. You're not that great. And it's true because the one you're going to is great. Uh, then, then wave number two, you have all the other doubts. You know, we, we can't even really say word because he was walking with the word, but there was no real written code for him to follow. So we can say that he detoured from scripture because there was no scripture to follow technically. Uh, so it, I think self was the real big wave and it just kept hitting them over and over again. The reality is I'm not big enough to do what I'm currently doing. But he doesn't begin to sink until the text, the Bible, yes, right, that yes. book that, that you book. guys just stood up for uh, <laughs> in previous uh, broadcast. Yes, uh, it's it says he saw the waves, yes. and then he began to sink. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What could have come from the waves that makes him begin to sink, and how is that relevant to today? Yeah. Again, you 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 look at the waves as. Uh, ad, as adversity, yes. uh, fear, yes. doubt, you can name any arena of your life. If we're, we're talking to individuals who are home, you might be suffering with mm -hmm. a physical illness and that could be a wave in your life. Wow. And the Bible speaks to us about healing and how yes. by his stripes we are healed. Yes. And so if that's what we should keep our eyes on, wow. The sickness has the ability for us to take our eyes off of that wow. and put it on the wave. And wow. so there, there are many instances sure. of, of those kind of things that happen Master, in our lives. I, I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, there's so many things that can beat against you. And, and the fact that, and, and it's one of those things that you, you don't know it until it hits you. Yeah. You, you don't know the power of that wave until you get hit by one. So a lot of people may sit back and say, well, well, then that, that's not faith. Then you don't have faith if you, if you doubt it. You know, they beat poor Peter up uh, in this text. You know, Peter just didn't have any faith. How could you be looking at the Lord and then take your eyes off him? I mean, he's standing right there. What's the matter with you, Peter? But, you know, the truth is that wave didn't hit you. You know, that it didn't push you to the point that you could have lost your life. And that is him standing proverbially on on that wave and on the and I have a whole different paradigm on how I see this text. It isn't just a miracle to me. It is it is really an open show of how creation worships the one that it knows created it. Right. And when he stands on it, the water just comes to attention because they know who it is. And then he says, Peter, come feel this. 
come come mm. feel this because you have an inheritance in there. I want you to see what this feels like. And he gets it for a moment, but like many of us, the, the, the thing hits you and you kind of miss it. That's so good, uh, Pastor Brian, because when you read further in that text, I'm almost sure either in this marking text or, or, or maybe in Luke yeah. or, or Matthew, but the end of it, when they get out of that storm mm -hmm. and they go into the, uh, uh, to the Gadareans, Come on. when they get there, it's ministry waiting for them or sure an assignment. An assignment. So there, so Peter and the boys are on the on, on the water. This, on. this this wave hits. He gives Peter a glimpse of. Yes. Here is what I want to do for yes. you. Yes. Wow. Here is here is what you have here in me. Here is what you have in me. And yes. so 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 they oh. leave that context, mm. and after having that experience. Yes. They're met, they meet a man who, who is possessed by yes, them. Yes, yes, yes. That's good. Yes. That's good. So yes. are, you, are you telling our, our, our listeners that situations come into our lives mm. and the goal is for God to push you to something greater? Yes, yes, yes. So, sometimes they're the doorway to learning there's more. Mm -hmm. and, and you'll never get more sometimes just by sitting in the pew. Sometimes you have to walk through and even go through adversity in order to know that the power of God is real. So I can tell you all day long it exists. Yep. It's not until you're on that water and that thing hits you that you kind of go, now let me see if it really works. But it only happens to the people that are willing to get out of the boat. Now that is the truth. And, and as you said, <laughs> Pastor Tim, the Lord's inviting us to join He's him in us. that miraculous realm. Absolutely. Mm. Okay. Mm. So uh, Mark's gospel says we're supposed to lay hands on the sick. Yes, sir. And, and there's no time limit. So we should still be doing that today. Absolutely. We're the representation of the kingdom Absolutely. of heaven. Yes, we, we are, are the ambassadors yes, of are. that kingdom. Yes. So, the, so Satan sends storms. Paul says we're not ignorant of his devices nor are we ignorant of his methods. Yes. What he does and how he does it. Yes. So we're to continue to walk in that calling, in regardless that calling. of the storms, regardless. regardless of the situations, yes, sir. and be mindful of what we asked the Lord to do, yes. which was bid me come bid to the water. Yes, yes, yes. So the question that we would ask yes. is, are you willing to go through the struggle that comes wow. when you get <laughs> wow. to that level? That's the million dollar question. I, I hope every young preacher just heard what you said, <laughs> Bishop. You know, are you really willing to go through what it takes to say, I want to walk in that promise and that kind of anointing? There is a cost for it, yeah. and we don't preach about the cost much. I used to hear it a whole lot coming up in ministry, and it was very, that was so understanding to me because anything with value has to go through something, sure. something in order to be tested value. It's got to have some battle scars, and yeah. we got a lot of Christians with no battle scars because they're trying to stay in the safety of the boat. Right? Yeah. But once you step out and say, I want more, yeah. yeah. But it appears when you read the text, um, Jesus walks on the water, right? The mm -hmm. Bible said he comes down yes. and he sees them. Mark says he sees them. And, and it's not that he can see them physically because it's dark. Mm -hmm. It's pitch right. black. Right. right. You know, the, the, that Sea of Galilee is 16 miles in diameter. And so they're out in the middle. So they're eight miles from land. He can't see that far. But mm -hmm. the scripture says he sees he them. Saw them. Yes. And he just comes down and walks on the water. I yes, like sir. your phrase. The yes. water stands at attention, stands at attention. so he can walk mm. on it. And then mm. he says, what, what, what the, the water's doing for me, I'm going to enable it to do for yes. you. Yes, yes. The works I do yes. shall ye shall do you also. Do. Yes, sir. Yes, wow, sir. what a powerful yes, promise. Yes, so sir. we should be doing those things. Satan should not be able to stop us. No. He should not be able no. to defeat us. Mm -mm. We are literally more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Because, because of the water walk. Because of the water walk. Yes, sir. You, you know, something devastating happened over the last 40 years in, in, in churchism. Uh, where we've talked ourselves out of the supernatural. Yeah. And we have made supernatural a joke, the concept uh, a joke. Uh, you, you can parody something so much that people no longer believe it. Yeah. And it's the subtlety of the enemy. You know, we, you, 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 we make fun at things that are actually spiritual realm conversations. And we've talked ourselves out and we've exchanged, I'm sorry to say this, but I'm an academic as well, but we've exchanged academia, intellectualism for spirituality sure and we're at a deficit sure. spiritually we're not seeing those moves in our churches because the truth is we've exalted one above the other yeah and when we should really be walking in the, the essence of uh, of the pneuma the, the breath and the wind of the Lord we should be walking in that 
I want that. To, to add to that, Bishop used the text, you know, uh, these works that I do shall yes. you do and greater works. Greater works. And so the, the, the other piece to that is he's, he's really alluding to outside of that, the, the work of building and moving the church. Yes. Mm -hmm because he's not here to do that yes. in the physical mm. realm. So, mm. so he's giving it. us the authority yes. to build the church yes. and to push the church forward. Yes. And so, so it's even mm. compounded uh, more than just, okay, you see us, you see me doing these great yes. moves, yes. But, but here's something greater. Mm -hmm. You gotta build the church. You do it. You, wow. And in order for you to do that, you have to know what adversity yes. is. You have yes. to know and, and, uh, how to overcome adversity. Yes, so, so yeah, that's, that's I now, mean, you, that, that's, you, you, you may, that's You good. make a statement that I feel needs some, you know, some examination. You said he, he wants us to move the church. Mm -hmm. Now, whenever we travel, you know, there's always a destination. Yes. You know, I'm, I make no bones about the fact I love Disney World. <laughs> so right. it becomes the destination. Yes, we get up right. in the morning, we're packed the night before, we mm -hmm. get on the plane, I'm going to Disney World. Yeah. But when you say move the church, to where? Mm -hmm. To the full knowledge of the truth of who Christ is. Mm -hmm. That that's that's the mandate for the church. Wow. Right? To to wow. to 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 know to bring us to the full knowledge of Christ, yeah. the truth of who Christ is. Yeah. Everything else is window dressing. Everything, wow. else, Everything is else is window, window dressing. dressing. Right. And so when we're doing all of these other things, wow. does this bring us to the true knowledge of who Christ is? Yes. Wow. Uh, I think that Ephesians 4 text says, and to the, the measure and the stature, yes. to the fullness of Christ, yes. right? And, yes. and that is our purpose, is yes. to move the church forward. But we cannot, th th we must stress this, we cannot move it with intellectualism. That's the dangerous uh, passage in Ephesians 4 yeah. because it has that until. Yeah, until. And, and yeah. You, you, you guys, <laughs> you, you got to look at that until. Until. And it's almost like Paul suggests he gives some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastor, yeah, yeah. teacher. And yeah. then he says, until yeah. we come to that knowledge. Yeah. It, for me, it's mm -hmm. like the scripture suggests... I need all these other people in my life to bring me to a full knowledge of Jesus. Then once I get there, I don't need that anymore. Mm. Not that I don't enjoy the teaching sure, and the yeah. fellowship, yeah. but I'm not going to walk away from God now. I'm not going to fall to it, pieces if my pastor's not there. Amen. Right, but, but amen. even that until peace, it, it's, it's really like continual. Yes. yes. It's not a once and for all. Right. Okay, yes. I've come to the full knowledge. Right. No, I'm ever growing yes. and evolving in terms of the full knowledge yes, of who Christ are. is. Yes, now see, you make, it, you make it more personal. <laughs> That's how I look at Christianity. Yeah. I don't look at it as a denomination yeah, or a religion. Right. I look at it as a personal walk with God. Right. Satan has come in and turned it into a religious expression. Right, yeah. And what you're saying is true. It's like being married. And, and the longer we live with our wives, the more we know them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you, you become, it, it's, it's like you become more comfortable right. mm -hmm. with right. that knowledge. Right. Yeah. And you, you know what to expect, you know what their likes and dislikes are. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you're suggesting we should get to in Jesus. So our Absolutely. task as pastors is to help bring the parishioner bring to that place there. of Absolutely. comfort Absolutely. with Christ. Absolutely. 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 And, go yes. ahead. Go uh -huh. ahead. Go ahead. Uh, which, is, which is why we go back to the phraseology of keeping the doctrine, mm. right? Keeping it good. Mm -hmm. and, and technically keeping the doctrine is paramount to keeping the faith. Because faith and doctrine are how we exist. Mm. If you don't have one, you don't have one without the other. So right. you have to have them both. And, and so if we're, if we're good students of what the Lord says to tell us to do, we're supposed to be keeping his words and so it's supposed to be so continual that people actually grow. And they are supposed to grow to the cyclical effect of I've grown to the point, I've got the pastor, the preacher, the teacher, all those things. Now I should be able to do some leading for the others that are coming right. in. Right. It should be a quicker turnaround in what we're seeing now, right. right? So people are coming to church and getting comfortable just remaining. Mm -hmm. They're not moving towards a desire or passion to say, now let me catch on so somebody else can catch on. Right. And, and we have to get that fire going right. so we can move so the church. So based on what you just said, uh, is it fair then to say that <laughs> at, in, in 2022, mm -hmm. We should be supernatural spiritual giants if we built on what the guys did in the first century, yes, what the apostolic fathers yes, did sir. moving forward. Yes, sir. When did the break come? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Pastor Brian. Ah, uh, Pastor <laughs> Brian. I, well, I think I threw mine out there. You know, it came out, you know, I mean, naturally probably longer than 40 or so years ago. But when you stop allowing the supernatural to exist, then you're only doing half of the assignment. And many of us have to repent for only doing half the work. We're doing half the job. So we are giving you a message, but if the message doesn't have the signs and wonders that follow it, which Jesus said you should have them because they are what come with the package. So we got half the package. So people aren't seeing this, the miracle power of God because most preachers don't even believe it. Right, we don't, we don't have it like don't, that. Don't I, we, I played a game when I was a lot younger and it would be six, seven, eight people in the room and yeah. you would tell one person something and they would tell the next person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the time it got to the last person, yeah. the message was diluted. True. And so the, the fervency of the message and the authentication of the message was diluted. And yes, that's what sir. has happened from yeah. the first century yeah. all the way up to yeah. the 21st century. Yeah. The mm. message is, is, is not, it's diluted. Yeah. But, but listen, there were breakout points before we got here. Absolutely. Right? Azusa Street Revival. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, the French Revival, the Wales Revival. Mm -hmm. You know, these things happened where you kind of started to see the Holy Spirit say, yo, Look at this is how it really is supposed right. to work, right? Uh, uh, do it again, and, and I'll do it again in 50 more years. You know, we got to get to that place where we allow ourselves to say, Lord, we need you to do the church like you did before, and not just wow. a revival. Wow. We need your essence, your ethos. If it we doesn't need a happen, movement. yeah, we need it. We need a move. Will we see that yeah. again? We're, no. <laughs> And I'm emphatic. No, no. <laughs> and you did no. a clean cut. We, no. We've we, 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 uh, we reached the point of no return. Mm. Um, you know, when you mentioned those revivalists, yes. uh, you, you know, you didn't mention the Jonathan Edwards one that came up in, in New England. Yeah, States, yeah, that's true. And he preaches the most outstanding message, yeah. centers in the hand of an angry God. The hands of an angry and, God. And he right. stands there and he illustrates mm. God. He says, these are God's hands mm. and all the people standing. And every now and then he opens up his hands and people fall and go into hell. Yeah. Yeah. Folks came and gave their lives to yeah. Jesus because the yeah. preaching was confrontational. Sure. It was in sure. your face. Yeah. Sure. Thank God for the Azusa Street Revival, which opened us up to new moves sure, of the Holy sure. Spirit. It's like God was saying, okay, Jonathan Edwards got you to repent. Yes. Now I'm using this man to yes. get you to walk in the, the power of the anointing. Yes, yes. But we lost it. Yeah, we did. We did. And we the did. repentance gave way to secularism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so now here we are. The enemy has been so good mm -hmm. at putting stuff before us that mm -hmm. has no relevance. Yeah. Right. So true. And I believe secretly Christianity wants to be like the Catholic Church. That's why we're seeing the hierarchies, mm. archbishops oh, and yeah. apostles. and all. We, 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 we strip ourselves of power in order to have prestige. We're exchanging all the yes. time and we don't realize yes. these are exchanges. Wow. We don't think God takes it all serious, but he absolutely Constantine does. Constantine did more than we know. Yes, he did. And we're, I believe we're suffering oh, for yeah. it. Well, gentlemen, we're coming to the end. I tell you, time needs to stand still for oh, us. These men of yes, God, they just does. bless me so much. And I know they bless you because you write and tell me. So keep those letters coming with questions, critiques, even if you don't like what you're hearing. Mm -hmm. Write us so that we can correct it if That's we're right. wrong. We're not always right. That's right. There are things that happen uh, in our own growth processes that may cause us yeah. to have a slanted view. Right. And like for me, you know, I think the Marine Corps is the best branch of military service. <laughs> Some of you may think that the Army or the Navy, and that depends on where you serve. That's for me, right. nobody's better than the Corps. That's but right. that doesn't mean I'm wrong. I'm never wrong. I'm just not <laughs> always right. But we thank God for you watching us today, and we listen. We want you to know it's time, as Pastor Tim says, join Jesus in the miraculous. Yeah. There is somebody waiting for you in Gadara who needs the power that is inside of you. So go through the storm, go through the trial, don't give up, but do what Peter does. Call on the name of the Lord. He said, Lord, save me. So when we close this broadcast, go to the Lord and say, Lord, save me. Save me from sin. Yeah. Save me from self. Save me from fear and save me for you. And we guarantee mm -hmm. that you will be different. It is our prayer that the power of God rest upon you and the love of God cocoon you in these dangerous times. Until we meet again, continue to walk with Jesus and we know he will walk with you. God bless you. The Christian and the Culture is produced and recorded in the studios of Lighthouse TV. Positively different. 
There are times in life when the pull of this culture wears us down and leaves us feeling defeated. But the Bible says we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. In his new book, The Christian in the Culture 2, Walking in Victory, Bishop Eric A. Lambert Jr. reminds us of tools in the Word of God that the Christian must use to maintain a life of victory. Walking in Victory offers fresh insight about living for Jesus with a focus on walking in the Spirit and in the fruit thereof. Learn how to maintain your identity and purpose as a believer by ordering Walking in Victory. The Christian in the Culture 2, Walking in Victory, is available at ericlambertministries.org and wherever books are sold. Does God desire for his followers to be conformed to today's culture? Or are believers supposed to function, think, and be distinctively different? In his new book, Cancel the Culture, Securing Our Identity as Christians, Bishop Eric A. Lambert Jr. provides guidance for the Christian trapped in a struggle for identity. Each chapter of the book presents a challenge for the reader to cancel a specific ungodly influence of modern culture. As these influences are abandoned, the special purpose of God's calling for His children will become clearer. Journey toward rediscovering your identity as a child of God by ordering your copy of Cancel the Culture. Visit ericlambertministries.org to order the book and find more resources that will enhance your walk with Christ. The Bethel Deliverance app is now available to download for free at Apple Store and Google Play. You can tune into Sunday services through live stream, view video sermons on demand, listen to audio messages through podcasts, send prayer requests, communicate through social media, and you can contribute to the ministry simply by using today's technology. Get access to all of Bethel's media outlets and church events right at your fingertips. Go to the Apple Store or Google Play and download Bethel Deliverance to get connected today. Praise the Lord. I'm Bishop Eric Lambert. I want to welcome you to the Eric Lambert Ministries website. On this website, you will be able to get information about books, CDs, DVDs, and even the printed word designed to help you in your walk with Christ. You'll find information about our YouTube channel and the services that we have at Bethel Deliverance International Church. And we want you to understand that our ministry is designed to lift up Jesus, to glorify his name, and to get you, the listener, connected to the power of the Holy Ghost. I am excited about the Eric Lambert Ministries website, and I want you to join us as often as you can, and we guarantee two things. You'll have a closer walk with Jesus. Number two, your life will be richer. God bless you. Access resources that will enrich your Christian walk today by visiting ericlambertministries.org. That's ericlambertministries.org. The Christian and the Culture is a production of Bethel Deliverance International Church. For more information about our media ministry or to partner with us, visit BethelDeliverance.org and go to the media outreach link to make a donation. You can also call 215-885-2585 to speak with a media representative. Thank you for watching. Be blessed.